well, here we go again. Uh, another chance for some severe weather. A uh, big area. I mean, this is this is a large area from Montana all the way through Nebraska into Illinois. Now, that's that's the, the very, all of it. That's a big area, uh, especially for late July. July is usually one of those months, where, especially when we get closer to the end of it, the things try to taper off a little bit with the severe weather criteria. Uh, but this month has not been like that. It seems like almost every day uh, there's been severe weather somewhere. Uh, in the U.S. in July, and uh, today is no different. In fact, look at this, a moderate risk. That's all the way down here. That's a that's a level four out of five. That's up there. So not only is there a level four moderate risk right there in the middle, but we also have this level three for parts of Minnesota into North and South Dakota, most of the eastern half of South Dakota, just nudging into Nebraska here a little bit, and then northwestern parts of Iowa. So it does look like South Dakota is going to see the brunt of this one uh, with the moderate risk right there. Brookings, Watertown, Aberdeen, Redfield, Gettysburg, uh, and Huron. And then that enhanced risk right there on the outskirts. And notice Nebraska, north central, northeast Nebraska in that slight to uh, the level two slight risk and the level one marginal risk. So normally when you uh, see a, a risk like that, a moderate risk, your, your first inkling is to gravitate towards the tornado threat. And there is. I mean, there's there's a tornado threat right here. Uh, we're looking at this area right here, basically where that uh, moderate risk is at, there's a tornado risk. It's a 5 to 9%. So it's like, well, that doesn't, I mean, okay, there's a, a decent chance for a tornado or two, but it doesn't scream to me moderate risk, level 4 out of 5. That's because tornadoes aren't the main risk. It's a risk, but it's not the main risk. The main risk is severe wind, especially right here. We're looking at this, this area right here. The hatched area is uh, a 10% probability that you're going to see down here. Wind gusts in excess of 74 miles per hour. All of this. Now, the best chance is going to be right there. So that area that has the moderate risk, it's a massive wind threat. Now, wind is wind. Tornado versus straight line wind like this can do the same damage. But this is uh, more of a straight line wind, wind potential. In fact, the word uh, derecho has been tossed around a little bit. So let's talk about that. So the Storm Prediction Center that is uh, responsible for laying out all of the these risks, the slight risks, the moderate risks, the high risk, all of that, uh, puts together a forecast and then they talk about it and this is the forecast discussion and here is where they start talking about the potential for a derecho the, and in a circled area the most likely scenario for evening convective activity continues to be an organized and fast-moving linear MCS to develop and race eastward across eastern South Dakota into parts of Minnesota and Iowa. One or more corridors of widespread significant wind damage are expected possibly achieving derecho criteria have extended the enhanced slight risk a little further east and in parts of Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Uh, and so they keep kind of talking about the what they did. And this this right here, too, is 6,000 for Cape values. That's, <laughs> that's really, really high. So the Storm Prediction Center, they don't do this often. They don't talk about the potential for a derecho before it happens because it's kind of a weird thing to classify because there's a lot of different boxes it needs to check in order to become or was a derecho. I mean, it's, it's usually they classify it after the fact and they just talk about the wind threat beforehand. So let's take a look at what it takes for a storm to become one of these massive derechos. Okay, this website is also from the Storm Prediction Center, SBC. You can find it. Uh, in fact, I'll show you the, the website after, after I'm done here. Um, but let's, let's talk about this. Uh, the uh, criteria right here, criteria, what does it take to become a derecho? So first and foremost here, widespread severe reports from either wind damage or 58 plus mile per hour gusts measured or estimated. So you can't classify it as a derecho until afterwards. You need widespread severe reports compromise, comp comprising the wind swath. Uh, all occur from the same MCS. So it's basically the same storm, wind damage, or wind gusts 58 miles per hour or higher. So that's, that's number one. 
Number two, this one right here, the parent MCS must be at least 100 kilometers, that's 60 miles long, and lasts for at least three hours. So again, it's, this is, you have to look at the storm and see what it did in order to be able to classify it. So this is just number two. It needs to be over 60 miles uh, long and last for at least three hours. All right, number three, this one right here. All reports in the wind swath must occur in a progressive sequence. So it's like one here, then one here, then one here, downstream. Every single one has to happen further down the line than the one before it. So very specific rules here in order to become a derecho. Okay, number four, and we're about halfway there, but number four, one, two, three, this is number four. The parent MCS forward speed is greater than the environmental mean wind speed. So the storm itself needs to be moving faster than what the wind speed is in the environment around it. So it's got to be going fast. So that's, that's number four. Number five, number, this one doesn't seem like much. Number five, right there. This doesn't seem like much, but this one's kind of hard to achieve. No more than one hour may elapse between reports in the, in the wind swath. So these storms can last a really long time, but you can't have a lull longer than an hour. That just, that totally negates the whole thing. So if you go an hour and there's no report of 58 mile per hour wind gusts or damage or anything like that, thrown out the window and you gotta start all over. So number five, that's a tough one. Number six is kind of a tough one too. That one's right here, number six. Spatial gaps between reports in the wind swath may not exceed 200 kilometers or 124 miles. So basically you need, you can't have the storm go for 124 miles without a severe weather report. Now, this one shouldn't be a problem. I mean, 124 miles, that's, that's a ways, but still, these things are moving fairly quickly. But if something happens where you just don't have any wind report, any severe uh, reports between 124 miles, thrown out the window. Now, number seven, this is the big one right here. Number seven, this one, the wind swath must be at least 400 kilometers long, 250 miles. That's usually the deal breaker. Storms find it very difficult to last that long. They do, and that's why we have derechos on record, but lasting for 250 miles from one end to the other with all the severe weather in between, that one's hard to do. Okay, number eight, starting to get into the weeds now. At least five 75 mile per hour gust reports separated by 50 miles and must occur in that 250 miles so there's a lot going on there five gust reports so five at least 75 mile per hour wind gusts five of them separated by 50 miles inside of that long wind swath that 250 miles so there's there's a lot of specifics there that's why these things are hard to do and they're very difficult to categorize because there's so many things that have to happen. We're at number eight, we still have one more to go. But this one, basically five very severe weather wind reports within 50 miles inside of that 250 mile long wind swath. That's a lot. And lastly, number nine, yeah, there's nine of them. Three measured 75 mile per hour wind gusts within 50 miles. So three of them for sure have to be within 50 miles of that wind swath. So that's, I mean, just to kind of add to that number eight, number nine makes it even a little more difficult. So there's a lot going on uh, in order to get a derecho. You may be uh, wondering what, okay, I was talking about an MCS earlier there, uh, back earlier in the video, What what is that? It's a mesoscale convective system. So the definition complex of thunderstorms which becomes organized on a scale larger than the individual thunderstorms and normally persists for several hours. Uh, they may be round or linear in shape and include systems such as tropical cyclones, squall lines, MCCs. Uh, MCS is often used to describe a cluster of thunderstorms that does not satisfy the size, shape, or duration criteria of an MCC. So it's basically just a cluster of storms, a big cluster of storms. So wanted to make sure you knew what that was. 
So there you go. That's kind of what uh, is going to be happening for Monday, July 28th. Pretty good storm system rolling through, damaging wind. The whole derecho thing is a possibility. Uh, tornadoes, hail, everything on the table uh, today. And I'll, I know I was going to post a link to uh, uh, to what uh, where I was getting all this information from the Storm Prediction Center. I'll do that in the in the comments below. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, stay safe, everyone.